Okay, ladies and gentlemen. No, we're not ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Distinguished guests. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> fans, air conditioners. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> okay, welcome along to Muso Hub. This is our very first episode, and uh, we hope you enjoy it. Uh, there'll be lots of uh, probably stuff ups and things, but um, but that's the way it's going to go. Totally live. And uh, sit back for the next 20 minutes or five minutes, depends how long before we stuff it up. <laughs> sit back and uh, enjoy. As I said, welcome along to Muso Hub. Just uh, thought I'd explain to everybody what this is all about. Um, obviously, it's to do with music. And um, this idea came to me about oh, 12 months ago to do uh, a little music show on the uh, internet, a web based webcast. And uh, I wanted to go down the track of music, but I thought, what way can we head? And I thought, well, being a muso myself and knowing lots of musos, uh, I know that's, um, that there's a, already a good um, community out there, but we thought we'd um, try to bring that community even closer together and share our thoughts and um, learn some um, technical things that we might not know from each other. Uh, things such as uh, home studio setups for recording, they're very popular these days, doing home recording. Uh, basics of sound, PA systems, etc. Most people in um, musos start off playing guitar or singing or something and then suddenly they think, oh, I need to be able to be heard. So um, it's handy to know the techniques of uh, doing a basic mix and these days with uh, computer-based um, recording and live sound, um, there's a lot more to know, but some, some bits of it are actually easier. Other things we might tackle are uh, music videos, how to make a music video, uh, lighting, instrument care, choosing an instrument, um, and anything else to do with playing in a band. And may I say right from the start, this is for you guys too as much as for anybody here. So we want you to actually choose um, what you're, you'd like to see in the shows. Um, this is only a, our starting show, we hope to have different formats of shows, maybe um, some tuition, maybe um, how uh, a special dedicated one to drummers, special dedicated one to guitarists, bass players, keyboard players, etc. And also, um, we're not sort of heading down any genre, specific genre, so it's open to any sort of music from classical through to thrash metal and everything in between. Um, so if you've got any suggestions of shows, um, make sure you let us know. Now each week we're going to have a uh, special guest, whether they're alive in the studio, and uh, this is Studio G um, we're working out of tonight, which is um, where most of the shows will be done from. There will be some done live, and um, we hope later to um, actually do some live um, streaming, but at the moment the shows are pre-recorded. But uh, each week we're going to have a special guest, and like I said, whether the guest is in the studio or via Skype, uh, which we'll look at doing later, and we're going to use some local people. Um, we're based in Australia, here in Central Victoria. Use some local people, local muso musos and um, people in the music industry, and but then gradually spread it out worldwide. Um, so if you've got any ideas or anything you'd like to see included, give us a line. Now there's two ways you can watch Muso Hub. Um, well there's multiple ways you can watch it, but um, the two main ones is on our YouTube channel, which is uh, YouTube forward slash Muso Hub, and or on our web page, which is musohub.tv. So www.musohub.tv. So if you have a look on there, there's um, ways you can contact us. Now, speaking of our special guest, uh, we have a special guest uh, in the studio tonight, and uh, he's all the way from, what, 10 k's away or something? Not like even. That. Not even that. No, I'd like to 
Welcome, Mr. Steve Saxton, uh, local guitarist and vocalist extraordinaire <laughs> from the Bendigo area. Thanks, John. And um, Steve's played uh, like I have for many years in uh, in bands around town. And uh, the thing that Steve's done different than I've done is worked in a lot more uh, originals um, music. I've basically concentrated on covers. Um, we had a go at songwriting a couple of times, but it never really took off. But um, yeah, so we're um, happy to have Steve here tonight. Steve's got a new band he's just formed, which we'll talk about later, and uh, some recording happening, and actually happening here in Studio G. We've been doing some recording here. And um, yeah, so Steve, um, thought we'd do a bit of a background on you okay. for the start. Background check. Background check, yeah. <laughs> Um, I've got some questions here I prepared earlier, maybe. I thought I had some answers prepared earlier, but I'm not sure what's happened to them. They, so. I think they're going. <laughs> They've gone. Um, we'll start right from the beginning. Um, people are probably interested out there and in how, how you um, got into music, what your very first memories are of music and, um, and where it all started from. Um, for me... Thinking about like very earliest times and and things that that sort of catch in my memory, the first cassette player that my mother bought um, was a, a mono, just a mono cassette player. It sort of tells you how long ago it is. Yeah. Um, and the very first cassette that she bought was was called the Mercy Beat. Okay. So yeah. it was you know Herman's Hermits and stuff like yeah. that, and that got thrashed. Yeah. And I think after that, a, a fair bit of Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young and stuff like that. And then I remember. A couple of years after that, she lashed out and bought a, a record player. So we had yeah. Backman Turner Overdrive over and over and over. And oh, I, yeah. But I loved it. And all of her old Beatles and Stones records that she'd had from previous years before I was born. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So what's your, first, um, what's your first actual memory of um, picking up an instrument or wanting to play music or anything like that? First instruments were... Um, as toys, just sort of, you know, the plastic wind instrument things that, you know, like little organs and harmonicas and stuff that most kids have. But the first time I picked up a real instrument, a mate of mine was learnt, we were in primary school and he was learning to play guitar and he had an acoustic guitar in a bag. It was like a nylon bag with like tartan inside. I remember it. And him showing me what a chord was and trying to put my fingers on it. And it was just, it was all too hard. It just seemed ridiculously hard. That was the first time I ever picked up a guitar, but I didn't bother to actually make any effort to learn at that stage. Yeah. So speaking of learning, did you actually um, ever learn an instrument as in, were it taught or was it self-taught? or When um, I, I didn't learn to play the guitar till I was 17 and it, was on, it only happened because I was on a school trip with a friend of mine and... I, I, well, actually, I, I didn't know. I was in Year 10. I was on a bus trip. I had two cassettes with me, Dire Straits, Dire Straits, and Bruce Springsteen, born in the USA. And I think I listened to them about a thousand times. And he looked and he said, what are you listening to? And he said, no, you need to hear this. And gave me this tape called Heavy. And it had Sabbath and Priest and Maiden and Clapton and all this great guitar stuff on it. Yeah. And I came back, you know, wanting wanting to do exactly what I'd been listening to and went into a music store and... And I was upstairs in Shepparton yeah. um, and saw this fantastic red. It was almost like a flying V, but it wasn't quite. It was a Simar star. It was as cheap as, cheap as anything. And is, that that, was, is that something that I know? We've got some photos coming up later. Yes. Is that, that it? Yes. Okay. My first guitar. And I, I, still, I wish I still had it. But like a lot of instruments and other guitarists, I you know, sold it and yeah. bought another one kind of thing. I think that's pretty common. Um, I, I know there's a couple of... Like my first bass, I had this little short, um, short scale bass, and it was a um, like a Gibson SG shape. Cool. And it was a great little bass, but of course I thought it was only a toy and got rid of it. But I'd love to still have it now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so um, just another thing, Steve. What's the first record or CD that you can remember that you've purchased yourself? <laughs> well, CDs didn't exist when I was young enough to buy my own music, and I, I was trying to think about it today. What what the first thing was that I personally purchased, I'd say it was probably um, Jew guys, okay. <laughs> yeah. Rest of the World, something like that. Yeah. Which 
you know, I don't think it really had very much impact, but I'm pretty sure that was my first personal purchase. Yeah. Well, I think mine was a K KTEL record, so that's probably even... Um... We had K we had Ripper 76. I yeah. didn't buy it, but I loved it. <laughs> yeah, I think that was the first thing I purchased because it was multiple artists and, uh, and um, I can't remember who was even on it now, but it was, uh, it was uh, yeah, interesting. Um, probably shouldn't admit to some things I bought, but... Uh... <laughs> I got plenty of ABBA in my collection. So <laughs> You're not the only anyway. one there. Um, which musicians or bands do you think were the biggest influence on you when you first began playing? You probably already covered so that a little early, bit. Yeah, early stuff was always heavy yeah. stuff like you know, Motorhead and Priest mm. and, yeah. and things like that just because it was all guitar, guitar. driven. It was all yeah. you know, loud and fast guitar. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, it kind of changes depending on yeah. the situation. And um, tell us about the first um, band you were in or first... <laughs> gig what's the what's what's your memories of something like i'll that, probably right? get it wrong and, and and my friend anthony murphy will definitely correct me because he'll remember better than me but i seem to remember being in a uni band and playing um at a at a art student party and having to run around the units somewhere an hour or so before the party and and borrow uh, all of the the lamps, all of the the desk lamps, um, for our lights well, to think, play in someone's you know front white, room. Big white show. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So what was that? A, just a party, was it? Or yeah, it was a party, and that and that yeah. would have been. I think we were called Blood Red Roses at okay. the time because yeah. the drummer, yeah, uh, certain Mister Weir, um, was infatuated with uh, Guns and Roses. Okay, that wouldn't be the same Mister Weir that's still in the band yeah. now. You're yeah, with. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. that's very interesting. I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we might have some have a look at some photos. Uh, he brought in a couple of pics. Yeah, probably uh, embarrass you a little bit uh, if I can get this thing to work. Um, just remember where we put the photos. Yeah, I think they're right here. Okay, there we are. <laughs> and that would be the guitar you're talking about, or no, a different, no, it's a different one. No, that's, that's a, further down the track. track that's yeah. a, a Dean. That was my pride and joy for a while. That had um, an ebony. The fretboard with abalone inlays it was the same essentially the same guitar that sammy hago was using at the okay. time I, I loved that guitar but like everything you love it for five minutes and then there's something better around the corner that next one that's a, a john birch jb1 and and there's only as far as i know there's only three well at the time there were only three of those in the country yeah they were handmade british guitars the pickups were hand wound and even had um, the the pickups were were signed mm -hmm. by by the guy who created. And I suppose uh, you wish you still had that. All of them, I All wish them. I still had. The the stack in the background was that's in my bedroom. I was eighteen or nineteen, and I had a hundred watt you know double stack in the <laughs> in the bedroom. In, in the bedroom, which my mother could hear all the way home from work if she walked from from. Uh, the library at the school library in Yamurka. Yeah. All the way home, she yeah. could hear me. Playing on. Okay, and what's the? Uh, you got the orange. 120 watt orange. Oh, God, I wish I still had that. That was very good amp, single volume. And that's the famous red guitar we we're talking about earlier. The Simar Star, yeah, sort of half Explorer, half Flying V. Flying V, yeah, excellent. Yeah, I don't know, 250 or 300 bucks. It was a yeah, single pickup. And uh, the Laney amp, and what's the? That's a, the Manson Kestrel in front of us, another British handmade guitar friend of mine in Shep who uh, travelled to England quite a lot, would bring back you know, two or three guitars at a time and mm -hmm. important. He had, at the time, he had over 100 guitars. Yeah, excellent. And, and yeah, that, that Manson Kestrel had um, uh, a sort of a, a strange maple top and a mahogany body and, and again, um, hand-wound uh, pickups that were set in, in a resin. That, yep. that was, yeah, really, really great sound. Yeah. Um, just going to go back to something there. I just noticed the Angels, <laughs> big influence on you, or was that just a craze you were going no, through? No, I love, I still love the Angels, the Angels e yeah. even now. I wish I could still fit into that t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Speaking of the Angels, we had uh, sad passing of their bass, bass player, player this yeah. week too, yeah. um, which I suppose is in inevitable as uh, these guys get older. They're going to. Um, Going to leave us, but the rock and roll lifestyle. Um, that's it. Yeah, it's amazing that many have survived as long as they have. Actually, Indeed. I think. Yeah. Yep. All right. Um, I think we might move on to our um, little tip of the week now, which is something 
Um, something I think um, most musos, oh, well, let me rephrase that. I don't think a lot of musos know how to do this properly. Um, I, I happen to come from a background of a, an audio visual company and a hire company, so that's the only place, only reason that I've learned how to do it. And that's um, care and maintenance of leads, guitar leads and, um, and speaker leads, uh, um, whatever you, yeah, guitar leads, microphone leads, speaker leads. And um, a lot of people get there and wrap them around the arm and shoulder and stretch them. And I think most musos know that that's it not... It makes you want to strangle people when you right. see them do that, especially yeah. if it's your lead, isn't yeah. it? So most musos, I think, know that they don't do that, but when it comes to actually rolling them um, and looking after your cables, um, it's very important because the last thing you want is a crackly guitar lead mm. or mic lead when you're on, on stage. So what I thought I might do, um, I've got a couple of leads here. I've got an old pretty scrunched up guitar lead. I might throw that to you. Oh, thanks. And um, I'll grab a mic lead. And you give so me a bit just, of a demo. Just, just like that. That's it. Yeah, yeah, mate. You give yeah. me you give me a bit of a demo of how you think you you should. Um, this is how I do it. I don't know if that's um, meets with your a bit so I can catch it on the camera. There. Yeah, yeah. Let me see. Yeah. He's doing like, it. he's doing a very good job. That's the way I was taught to do it. Yeah. No, that's excellent. Um, and I notice you've got your little straps. Velcro around. ties. Yeah. Now yeah. I can't recommend them too much they're a fantastic thing we, we were taught just originally to knot it um but if you can afford it and go out and grab some velcro ties they keep them together and you can also have names and things on them um so what we might do we might go through that slowly so people out there can see it um steve was actually doing a really good job so i think i'll get you to to do it again so just nice and slow steve you can hold it up so people can see so the main thing is just to coil it about, yeah, about, so around in a coil, one way, and keep it about that size, roughly what you've got there. And then what, you, you can either keep just rolling it that way, which a lot of people do, which... Uh, so do you go up and under, or do you... Yeah, yeah I do, yeah, but yeah. The, fir the first thing that I'd do would be go, first way, if you haven't learned how to do it at all, is just roll it in a circle, and just keep rolling it in a circle. Now, the only problem with that, is if you've got a very, that's all right for a short guitar lead. Yeah. If you've got a very long lead, you um, you, you end up with um, it getting twisted. So that that's fine if you've just got a guitar lead that's okay, you know, two or three metres long. Um, but if you've got longer like mic leads and things like that, recommend learning how to roll it in inversely or you know, under and over or whatever you want to call it. So what you do, as Steve showed you, you roll it one way. It doesn't matter which way you roll it, whether you're left-handed or right-handed. You roll it one way, and then you curl it under and roll it the other way. So what you're doing, you're twisting it one way, then you're twisting it the other way. So when they pull out, it twists one way, other way, and so you end up with it without it tangled. So um, go back to the right camera here. and. Um, so, Steve, if you can, yeah, just see how quick you can do it there, and see how a bit of a competition. Yeah, he's done. He's been. He's done a bit of this, I think. I rolled a lot of light leads when I was a I was a lighting guy. I was lighting ready guy, for, a, yeah. for a cover band, and they didn't have any looms at all. They were all um, flex. Yeah. So. Nah, good job. I reckon that's pretty good. Um, so, if you're out there and not sure how to do it again, the main thing is uh, we might put some show notes on the. Um, the website if I can think of it this week to do it but as we said one way and then the other and keep it about that size about uh, 10 inches in the old language of course or what's that uh, I 200 no idea is 200 it? It looks mil like about I think. 15 centimeters something like that yeah so um, that's it and then either tie it off or um, or get a velcro tie all right, well, that's nearly about it for our show, so you can relax now. Fantastic. I'd <laughs> um, like you to talk a little bit about your um, your new band that you've got out, um, okay. because we're going to see a clip from uh, Berlin Postmark, which is Steve's band that's um, just been formed not long ago, and they're doing some recording at the moment. So if you'd just like to um, tell everybody a bit about the band, and then we'll uh, roll into a, a clip. I could go on for ages and ages about it because it seems to consume most of my waking hours apart from being at work, which is, you know, 
I guess what everybody does, but it, it formed in April. Um, Cole Thompson, uh, local music identity, called me and said, can you um, play a gig? It was a Relay for Life gig and, and just thought it was a good opportunity to, to get a new band together. I'd had a version of Berlin Postmark, but the drummer had to depart and the guitarist had, had departed before that. I uh, called up my friend Mick, who I'd played with for years, but a long time ago, and I thought it would probably just be a one-off. And he ha he hung in there and, and really enjoyed it, and, and the guitarist Murph as well. Um, so we ended up staying together and enjoyed it that much. We um, put together a short recording, um, and it's been pretty much a year. It's our anniversary, really, about now. And we just keep getting more and more gigs and having more fun and, and uh, yeah, so we're about to release a, an EP that we've recorded here in Studio G and we're really excited about that because it's it's um, really representative of what we do now and, and we're quite proud of it. So we're excited to be getting that out. Yeah, it's great. I've totally enjoyed uh, working with the band too. They're a fantastic group of guys to work with and uh, we can just polish it up a bit now and it's about ready to, to go so keep you, keep an eye out for that um songwriting steve who does the songwriting in the band in the in the initial phases the, the songs were were stuff that i'd done solo um and then after we'd been together for i think probably four or five months had a little uh, writing camp had a, a holiday away at mix place up uh, Corowa, and um everybody just threw every, all their ideas into the ring, be they bass riffs or guitar riffs or, or whole written songs. So yeah, now it's it's a free for all and everybody's just throwing their ideas in and it's great because it's not sort of dominated by one person. It's um it really is a band effort. Excellent. Yeah. Very good and uh good luck with it too. Thanks. We uh, we're right behind you, everybody in the uh Fresh Central Victoria area. Um well before we play the clip, um probably uh roll off the end of the show and um, just like to say it's been totally enjoyable and um, thanks Steve for uh, for coming along. Thanks, thanks for Steve. having me. Yeah. And um, we'll catch you all uh, next week. We're going to do a weekly show at the moment. That's the way it's going to roll as a, a weekly show. Um, we hope to have, um, you mentioned Cole Thompson, we hope to have uh, Cole in next week. I've spoken to him, he hasn't actually confirmed as yet. But hope to have him in next week to um, to speak a bit about festivals. He's um, he's the man. He's the man the, in he's the blues organizing festival, yeah. festivals, especially yeah. blues. He's yeah. a blues man in town, and um, so we'll have him in to talk a bit about that and have some footage, hopefully from um, he's got a fundraiser happening this weekend. So big hill winery. Yeah, yeah. big hill yeah. winery. So if you're out there and uh, local area of Central Victoria and Want to support them? That's on. Uh, do you know what day it's on, Steve? Is it both days? Yeah, you put me on the spot. I think it's Saturday. I think it's Saturday or Sunday. Anyway, you can look it up on um, the Benny Go Blues and Roots Festival uh, website. Um, but we'll hopefully we'll have um, Colin next week to um, go over that and talk a bit about um, the upcoming events during the year. So uh, we're going to now roll over to Steve, who's going to introduce the, the song, which I am. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, this is our, our track of the week, and um, a muso track, I think that's what we're going to call it, something like that, we haven't worked it out anyway, but this is the, the track of the week, and um, I think Steve knows which song it is. It's it starts with R. Oh, I reckon it's got to be right side of the sun, does it, John? Uh, hang on, yeah. we'll get back to you so we can actually see you, <laughs> and you're going to introduce it. Um, this is quite probably Berlin Postmark playing right side of the sun. Okay, thanks, guys, and see you all next week.
If you'd like to stay connected with Muso Hub, don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube, like us on Facebook, or follow us on Twitter.